purpose of this lesson is to learn what an event is, how events are used to control the program in the user interface, how to disable or enable events, some of the workbook, worksheet, chart, and application level events that you use frequently. An event is something that happens that causes the program to respond. This could be something like clicking on something, selecting a range, changing a value or updating a, updating a field. This is done by a program in the background called a listener. The listener is a section of code or a program that's responsible for checking to see if an event happens. The listener will then trigger a procedure to happen when the event occurs. Within Excel and VBA, there are different levels at which that listener can happen. Uh, the events can occur at the application level, such as opening a new workbook or changing the file name. Uh, at the workbook level, like if you want to add a new worksheet or modify a macro or something like that. Um, at the worksheet level, if we select a range, change a value, click a button, and so forth. And then at the chart, we can also do things like if you select the chart or update the values. Those are all different types of events that are going to occur. Now those are just the levels at which we can define them and then within those levels we can define what happens to the different types of objects at that level. There are some scenarios that you may encounter where you try to script something to happen and you want an event to occur in the background. So let's say I were to use one where if a particular field gets updated then I want to try to format it or update it or do something else. And what can happen if you do that is you may end up in an endless loop and you can't get out because what happens is the user selects the cell, uh, which changes the data because there's something in the background that's supposed to change it when they select it. And when the, when the program in the background changes the data, it also causes another selection to occur, which would cause another change of data to occur, which would cause another selection to occur and so forth. And that would just keep going and you'd end up in an endless loop. So sometimes it's necessary to disable the events at the beginning of a method and then re-enable them at the end to prevent this from happening. And the way that you do that is within the sub, all you do is application dot enable events equals false. Then you do whatever you were going to do in your code and then you, uh, excuse me, then you enable the events again at the end by setting that equal to true. These are some of the more common events that happen at the workbook level. We have workbook underscore activate, and that's going to be if the uh, workbook that contains the event becomes active. So if I click on the workbook from another program, so let's say I switch screens, maybe I do alt tab or something like that. If I activate the workbook, then it will perform this task. Conversely, we also have workbook underscore deactivate, which means if I select a different window, we can cause an event to occur. The default event for a work workbook is going to be workbook underscore open. And that's going to be if you open the workbook, then let's do something. So maybe when we open up the workbook, we want to do some things to keep the user from being able to make changes. Uh, maybe we want to keep them from being able to save it or something like that. Another way of preventing them from saving it is there is a workbook underscore before save. And that triggers when the user clicks save, but before the save or save as dialog appears. So essentially what happens is the user goes up the file, they click save, they expect the open file dialog to open up, but instead we can make a section of code that prevents it from showing up. So that would occur before the save dialog actually presents itself. We could also do something after the user saves it. Now this is going to be after the workbook is successfully saved, which means it's been committed to the hard drive or to a a um, flash drive or something like that. We also can do things where before they can print something out, we can cause something to happen. So let's say we have a spreadsheet that we don't want to be printed. We can cause it to not allow the print to occur. Uh, we can also do things before we close. In a lot of instances, when we open up a workbook and we do things in it, we're gonna open up some other resources. So we may pull in another workbook, we might get other worksheets involved and so forth, and we need to kind of clean that stuff up before we close it. Otherwise, it's going to tie up memory. 
So what we do is when we close the workbook, before it actually gets closed, we need to close all those other connections. We also have the workbook underscore new sheet, which that occurs when the user creates a new sheet in their workbook. We can look at workbook underscore sheet before delete, and then we can prevent the user from deleting something. Or if they delete, maybe we actually um, bring up some sort of prompt that prompts them for, are you sure you want to do this, or type a password, or something like that. We have workbook underscore window activate. So that's when the user activates any workbook window. So when they click into Excel and activate it, then that, that will actually cause something to happen. And then conversely, we can also detect when the user deactivates it. So when the workbook loses focus, maybe they click on another program, then we can cause it to do something. Worksheets also have their own events. Similar to the workbook, we have worksheet activate and deactivate. And once again, that's going to be if I'm in the workbook and I select the tab for a particular worksheet, I activate it when I select the tab and the worksheet underscore activate is going to kick off. When I choose a different tab, then the deactivate will kick in. We also have some mouse functions that we can override, things like before double click. What we can do with that one is prevent the user from double clicking. And so what we're going to do is we're going to override whatever the default double click event is. We can also prevent the user from right clicking by using the worksheet underscore before right click. And once again, that's going to override the default right click event. Worksheet underscore calculate occurs when the worksheet is recalculated. So if the user chooses to recalculate the worksheet, then we can, we can cause this task to occur. Worksheet underscore change, that one is going to occur when the contents of a cell changes. And then selection change is going to occur when the range itself changes. So make sure you're aware between worksheet change and selection change. Selection change is just simply that I changed whatever the selection range is. Change is that I've changed the contents of the cell. Charts also have the activate and deactivate. They have the same calculate. They have before right click. But they also have another one called mouse down. And that's going to be if the user clicks on a chart, then we're going to do something. We also have mouse move, which is self-explanatory. If you move the mouse, then we're going to cause it to do something. Uh, chart resize is going to be if you resize the chart. So if we click one of the handles on the edge to make it bigger or smaller, then we can cause it to do something. Or if we even just simply click on the chart, we can select it, and that will cause the user to do something if they select a chart element. At the top most level, we do have application level events. Now, these are going to require inserting a new class module, and I'll show that to you in just a minute. To do this, what you're going to do is you're going to make a new class module. You're going to put this line that says public with events app event as application. And then what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to select that from the object dropdown list, just like it were any other object in your worksheet. And then once we do that, then we have all of the new selections that can occur with a new app. All right, so to make my application level event, what I've done is I've opened up a new workbook and I've opened up the VBE. And what I want to do is I want to create a new uh, class uh, module. So I'm going to right click, insert, and then class module. All right, so now I have a new class module. We can rename it if we want. You'll notice over here in the object drop down, the only thing that I have is class. However, if I type in the line of code to do the declaration for the application level, that will change. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and paste that. And then now what we have is we now have a new declaration here for an object called app event. And so when I select that, you'll see that I now have app event underscore new workbook. Now this is the default event for it. And if I come up here to our properties, you'll see that we have things like after calculate, new workbook, protected view window activate, protected view resize, sheet activate. So this is stuff that's going to occur at the application level. And so no matter what you do within any of your workbooks, if this occurs, then, or if this type of event occurs, then this particular section of code would actually work. So we can sheet calculate and so forth. 
But what it's doing for us is making it where if any of this happens in any of the Excel spreadsheets that we have open at the time, this particular section of code will actually run. You'll notice over here on the side that we have Microsoft Excel objects and we have our class module. And you'll see you have one that says this workbook and then sheet one. So this is going to be our workbook level. And you'll notice under here we have workbook. And then these are all of the events that occur can occur. Now the default is workbook open. And so if I were to put this or put something in here, it would run every time you open up this particular workbook. So we can activate it if we add in uh, install or uninstall after we save it, before we print it, before save, these are all listed here. And so what's going to happen is doesn't matter what worksheet we're working with, but the particular workbook, if any of these events occur, then those will become true and that particular event will happen. Along with it, we can look at our sheets. So double click and then look at worksheet. Notice our default for a worksheet is selection change. And then if you do the properties drop down list, you can see all of the different events that can occur for a worksheet itself. And so just to demonstrate how this one works, notice our default is the selection changes. So I'm just simply going to make a message box and we're going to say hello. Okay, so that's it. That's all we're doing. All right, now if I go back over here to Excel, if I click on anything, if I change the selection, it's going to pop up and say hello. So it's, no matter what I click on, that pops up because every time that I change the selection, it's going to say hello. And the reason that it's doing that is because in our, um, in our worksheet selection change here, we've told it, type the message box. So anytime the selection changes, this is going to occur. In this lesson, you learned what an event is, how events are used to control the program and the user interface. You learned how to disable and enable events, and we do that so that way we can keep from ending up in that endless loop. You learned about the workbook, worksheet, and chart events, and also about the application level.